Okay, everybody. Um, this week, uh, I got thinking about how Mike says that um, it never hurts to repeat something more than once when it comes to the subject of the gospel. And I'm really seeing the value of that. So I'm going to uh, kind of repeat something that I did a long time ago, and um, but present it in a different way. So get ready. So um, today I want to talk about what we now call um, the one man doctrine, for lack of a better name. Um, there's probably a lot of the theological concepts over the years that kind of talk about this and probably has a much more elaborate name. Uh, one man doctrine works pretty good. Keep it simple. So let's start with a, uh, a conclusive statement that Paul made in, in uh, Romans chapter 5 verse 19 um, it's an equivocating statement and but it is a conclusion because he lays this all out in context in the 10 verses before that but for brevity I'm just going to read you his conclusion he says for as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous so he's talking about one man's disobedience many were made sinners that was adam his sin it was imputed to everyone by god and and uh, paul even says all are sinners so his his word many here means all now he's using the same language to say all these people which were many 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 people he's also saying by one by the obedience of one and of course he's talking about jesus christ uh, shall many or all be made righteous it's the same many and it's the same many who were sinners and we know all were sinners so that same many that were sinners are made righteous by the obedience of one this is where we're getting to the one man doctrine okay um, and uh, anybody who says no 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 that can't be totally true because we know you've got to believe belief is is an issue okay belief is an issue and uh sure and it is relevant to salvation and uh, it is relevant to having a covenant with god it is relevant to being righteous with god and so let's get to the that whole issue again because um when you're talking about believing uh in order to have covenant with god which is the evangelical message um you're getting astray when you're when you're trying to put it off onto individuals you're getting astray from god's perfect condemnation of everybody because of one man see when uh when adam sinned and uh, many were made sinners the reason many were made sinners is because god imputed that one man's sin to everybody okay so he needed a perfect redemption to cover that perfect transgression and take it away so this is how it goes so um, the first covenant was made with Abraham and according to that covenant Abraham believed God and God accredited to him as righteousness so and what was that covenant and what did Abraham believe Abraham believed that through his seed and the time he was childless through his seed somewhere in the future through that one uh, 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 offspring or descendant of his all of the families of the world would be blessed why did they, did all the families of the world need to be blessed because they were cur cursed they were cursed why because God condemned everybody because of the first Adam so through this one man's faith a seed would come through which all the families including um, uh, Abraham's family would be blessed so it was by the faith of that one man that the first covenant was created that a new covenant maker would come and so by which making the first covenant an old covenant so his seed that came that through which all the nations are blessed would be the next believer <laughs> okay i i hope you can follow where i'm going with this because it was abraham's belief that through him that's why we call it you are of the faith of Abraham Abraham because you are of, of the families of the world and of his faith all the families were blessed because through him a seed came 
and the seed would create a new and everlasting covenant, one that couldn't do what the covenant of Abraham did, because the covenant of Abraham did not redeem the world. It didn't. And so the first covenant was not going to be the covenant that would be everlasting and good news for all the world forevermore. That would have to be through the second covenant. And the Bible says that second covenant, that new covenant, would make the first covenant old. It would render it completed and, and done, over. So in the second covenant, it was established by Jesus Christ. Again, through one man's belief, like, like Abraham, one man's belief and only one man's belief, the new and everlasting covenant was established between God and God, between the Son of God and the Father God. And that is a new and everlasting covenant, and it was through his belief. And what did his belief do? Well, Jesus talked about he who believes. And everybody thinks it's about us, and even in modern day times, people say, see, Jesus talked about believers. No, he talked about he who believes. And, um, and he said, he who believes, greater works shall he do, meaning greater than himself. Greater works shall he do, because I go to my Father in heaven. Well, Jesus healed some sick people, he raised some people from the dead, and he walked on water, and um, Peter and Paul both are recorded as having done all that. But here's what Jesus also did. He said, I, take, I lay my life down and I will take it back up. Nobody that I know of has ever raised himself from the dead. And then remember his words though. He said, greater works shall he do. And then he said, because I go to my Father in heaven. So let's see who really believed. First of all, in all of history, nobody listening to my words right now can tell me that somebody did anything greater than Jesus. Number one. And he said that that believer would do greater. All right. Number two. It, in, uh, Paul goes on later to say in Romans, and that was in um, Romans chapter 11, he talks about, um, well, let me just read you 11 through uh, 30. 1133 to 1132 says for as it as ye in times past have not believed god yet have now obtained mercy through their unbelief obtained mercy through their unbelief even so have these all now not believed that through your mercy they also may obtain mercy for god hath concluded them all in unbelief that he might have mercy upon all now we both know that both john and Paul both said that God purposely made sure nobody believed. He blinded their eyes and stopped up their ears. Why? Because the only one who needed to believe was Jesus, and we all know he already did. So, who was the believer that established the new and everlasting covenant that benefits everybody? It was God. It was Jesus himself. Because... Like, like Mike said in, 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 in a webcast that I called in to bring up this subject about he who believes greater work shall he do, Mike said, yes, Jesus didn't just raise a few people from the dead. He raised them all from the dead. He didn't just heal a few people. He healed everyone. This is what his belief did. So we are not righteous because of what we believe or don't believe. We are righteous because of the belief and the obedience of one man. So let's get back to Romans 5.19. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. All. So by the obedience of one Jesus Christ, all are made righteous. It's a relief to find out your belief has nothing to do with the relief of the good news of Jesus' belief. That's the good news, and that's the relief it brings. All right, everybody. I hope you all have a wonderful, revolutionary week.